Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Continuing on in our discussion of Hayd, we reached the last hadith in the Bab of Tahara, in Kitab Tahara, in Umdah, Umdah al Ahkam. And this is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, which has immense fawaid, immense benefits for us. And again, it is dealing with the subject of purification and purification for the menstruating woman. What is the ahkam, what is the Islamic rulings for the woman who is menstruating? You know, how, how do we, uh, how, how does a woman ghusl and, 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 and these kind of things, or what, what is the ruling pertinent, pertinent to that about fasting and about uh, praying and, and making up those things? So this is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Actually it's the hadith of Mu'adha. An Mu'adha qalat sa'altu Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Fakultu ma bal al-haydi tuqdi as-sawm wa la tuqdi as-salat. Fakalat ahruriyatun anti. Fakultu lastu bi hururiyatun. Walakinni as'al. Fakalat كان يصيبنا ذلك فنؤمر بقضاء الصوم ولا نؤمر بقضاء الصلاة. رواه البخاري ومسلم. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, this hadith has immense, immense fawaid, immense benefits for us. And in this hadith, the hadith of Mu'adh, she asked Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها because Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها knew the affairs of the women. And she was also close to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so she asked Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha about the woman who was menstruating. She said, uh, what about the, the woman menstruating? Do, uh, she, she makes up her fasting, but she doesn't make up her prayer. And then Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she responded by saying, A hururiya tu anti? Are you from the Ahla Hurura, meaning the Khawarij? Are you from the Khawarij? And she said, No, I'm not from the Khawarij, not from the Hururiya. However, I'm just asking. And then Aisha responded, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, we, That used to happen to us during the time, and we, uh, meaning during the time of the Prophet, وسلم, meaning having height, menstruation, and we were commanded with making up our fast and we were not commanded with making up our prayer and this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim in this hadith is immense immense benefit uh, of immense fawaid for us regarding the hukum for the woman menstruating so in this hadith one of the benefits that we see here is uh, according to Sheikh Ali Bassam, he, he mentions a lot of very benefits, very beneficial benefits. And before we get into the benefits, we'll just talk about the meaning in, in general. So here, uh, uh, Mu'adh asked Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha on the reason which the Sharia made the woman uh, make make up her her fasting and not her prayer and so uh, then Aisha dur during the time she, she was menstruating and this is due to the fact that both of those are great forms of ibadah and salat is even more important and greater than the fasting so why is it that women make up the fasting, uh, make up their fasting and not Salat, because Salat, both of them are great forms of ibadah, they're both uh, part of the pillars of Islam, but the woman is only making up her fasting and not her Salat, why is that? So Aisha responded, radiallahu ta'ala anha, by making inkar of Mu'adha, you know, making a strong, stern response by saying, hey, uh, are you from the Khawarij? Because the Khawarij, they believe 
that they believe in sternness and they believe in hardness and they believe in difficulty in the religion aside from making takfir and decreeing people to be uh, disbelievers without right to do so but they believe in shiddah they believe in, in being stern and firm and harsh with the people so you're asking to make uh, additional harshness in the religion so then Mu'adha responded by saying, no, I'm not from the Khawarij, I'm not from the Hururiyah, because this is the place of Hurura, where the Khawarij, one of the places where they, they encamped. And so she said, I'm not from them, but I'm just asking. So then Aisha made clear for her the hukum. She said that during the time of the Prophet wasallam, we only made up our, when we were menstruating, we only had to make up our fasting, we didn't have to make up our prayer. And so... This has immense benefits for us. One of the benefits that Sheikh Ali Bassam Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned is of course that the menstruating, menstruating woman that she makes up her fasting and she is not, she does not have to make up prayer. She doesn't have to make up her salat. And this is because salat, we pray five times a day, every day. So that makes it, that would make it very difficult if a woman missed, for example, five days due to menstruation. And most of the time, menstruation is even longer than that. If she missed just five days, five times five is 25, she would have to make salat 25 times, she would have to make up her prayers. And that means in all their various uh, numbers, with Maghrib being three rakat, Fajr being two rakatain, and the other salats being four rakat. So she would be very busy trying to make that up as well as keeping up with her regular prayer. So there would be a very great difficulty there. Another benefit of this hadith is it also illustrates for us that the taqreer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for his ummah is also considered from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meaning that when the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam when he <coughs> Whatever he agreed with. So in this hadith, we don't have a statement. The Prophet ﷺ didn't say, we don't have anything where the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith. This wasn't from the statements or the actions of the Prophet ﷺ. So how do we know it's from the sunnah? Because Aisha anha said, she said in the hadith, she said, uh, she said it used to happen to us, meaning that it happened to us when? During the time of the Prophet For Nuk middle, we were commanded to make up the fasting and not commanded to make up the 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 the, uh, the prayer. Who commanded them? The Prophet So that's why it's from the Sunnah Taqriri. Meaning those actions with the Prophet uh, allowed to happen or, you know, we don't have a clear statement that he, he ordered, but he, he allowed for it. Another example of Sunnah Taqririya is the situation where uh, the, uh, a lizard was brought before the Prophet Sallallahu on the table of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala And that was maybe from the custom of Khalid bin Walid and his, his, his people radiallahu ta'ala But it wasn't from the custom of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet, so then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, Laysamin, this is not from the custom of my people. It's not from my, my lands. I, I'm not aware of this eating lizard. We don't eat lizard where I'm from. And Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, so then he asked, you know, is this haram? So the Prophet said, no. It's just that, you know, it wasn't from his, his people. So letting us know that here the Prophet didn't order with this. He didn't do this action but he allowed for it and making it permissible. So then it's called the Sunnah Taqriri. It's from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, things that he allowed, meaning it's permissible to do, and and so forth. Uh, another benefit of this hadith, as this hadith also illustrates for us, inkar ala kullu men sa'ala su'al so this also shows us the permissibility of making a stern admonition when someone is asking maybe a ridiculous question or they're making a question just for the sake of debate. As we know, we see this all the time from Ahl Bid'ah, the Khawarij, those Tikfiris and people like this, they always, they, they want to test the ulama and they want to test the people 
uh, they want to test the students and they want to ask questions to often to cause uh, difficulty and cause fitna instead of to gain knowledge. So in that situation, if it becomes clear why someone is asking a question, they're asking this question of, not because they want to gain knowledge because of fitna, then you can make strong and caught of them for that. And another benefit of this hadith is also the importance of making making knowledge clear for someone who is seeking to gain knowledge and they are seeking guidance. So in that situation, then yes, you should explain, take your time, be gentle, show them with kindness and good manners and good uh, and, and a good way and a good uslub. So if it becomes clear that they're sincere, they're not asking it for fitna, they're not asking it to test you, to try to cause harm to your reputation or, or harm to the sheikh's reputation or whatever. If they're asking it out of sincerity, that they want to know the hukum, then in that situation, it becomes clear that uh, it is important to make the make it clear so that the people understand it and do it with gentleness and kindness, not to scare the people away and not to harm them and belittle them, but to benefit them. Another benefit of this hadith is the reason the woman is not ordered, the, the menstruating woman is not ordered to make up her prayer is because of the difficulty, the difficulty, the mashakka, and the mashakka that it that it causes, uh, meaning the difficulty that a woman would experience, as we already mentioned, in making it up. And so this also, this hadith is also evidence for the qaida, which is a very important. Uh, it's one of the qaid al khamsa, one of the five principles in qaid fiqiya, in those qaid which is a, one of the, the uh, studies, one of the sciences related to fiqh. So this qaida fiqiya is called al-mushakka tajlibu wa taysir. Al-mushakka tajlibu wa taysir. Which means that when there is a difficulty, that it is permissible, a, a great difficulty is permissible to take an easy way. The Sharia has provided an easy way. So for example, under this qaida, how does this qaida, how does this principle fall with this hadith? Well, it's related to this hadith because the, the believing women, when they're having menstruation, they're not ordered to make up their prayer, but they're ordered to make up their fasting. The fasting, you can make up a day of fasting, two days, three days, seven days, whatever. But prayer, one day you would be making up five prayers for one day you miss. If you miss seven days, due to your men's, menstrual cycle, seven times five is 35, you would miss up, you would have to make up 35 of your salats. And according to their different way that they're prayed, whether it be rakatain of Fajr, whether it be uh, four of Dhuhr, or four of Asr, or three of Maghrib, whatever it is, it would cause a great mashakka, difficulty. So the Sharia has made a rukhsa, or the Sharia has made a, an exception here, and this is where it follows under that qaida, al mushakka tajlibu taysir that when there's a difficulty it uh, necessitates ease or that there's an easy way uh, to deal with uh, that difficulty and so those are some of the benefits that we gain from our ulama and some of the benefits we gain from that and that was the end of our study of the book of Tahara in Umdata in Umdata al uh, especially the uh, and, and we just finished the had, a hadith about uh, uh, specifically related to tahara, related to menstruation. So I hope that that will be a benefit, and I hope that some of the believing women will gain benefit and from that, because it's a, it's it's wajib to know that that knowledge, that knowledge about you know having to make up the prayer or making up the salat, all of those things to know what is an obligation upon you and what is not is, is, is wajib. That's the, the obligatory things. You need to know that in order to practice your religion properly and soundly. And that comes from ilm. It comes from studying these issues and knowing that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made ease for us and has made a means for us 
to to be able to uh, practice our religion with ease and you know showed us a way so we have to have knowledge and that is the fard al ayn i mean that's the fard that is the obligatory knowledge that that we must know that every muslim and especially every believing woman should know related to these issues of tahara pertaining to her to to menstruation because uh, the believing women when they become women of course they go through menstruation until uh until they come of age when they no longer uh have menstruation so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan